Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. For part of this video, we are going to be taking a look back at what's recently gone on, whether it be in the community or some of the additional possible information in my previous videos, okay? Just to see what's going on. If anything's been missed, anything of interest, anything that needs to be analysed, because as said, um, not, not long ago, did a poll or so in a video where we look back at comments, replies to regarding Dylan Rounds, and most people preferred that. So we're going to implement it today. A little bit on, I guess, maybe Jim Terry, a little bit on Lance, a bit on Pancakes as well, right, around that. And then also later on in this video, Warlight Raph is going to be exposed, not visually, don't get too excited, but exposed some secrets revealed about him, okay? Don't know why I'm talking in third person, just sounds better. So it's going to get very wild, okay? So what should we begin with first? Let's look at Dylan Rounds, first of all. Bear in mind, for the people that are watching right now, welcome. I appreciate you being here. You can share your thoughts, opinions down below in the comment section and the live chat. For people that join later on in this video, feel free to remind those people to re-watch the beginning, which covers Dylan Rounds. Just so then people can't complain, whinge or moan and say, oh, where's all the Dylan Rounds stuff? You got what I'm saying? So as for the Find Dylan Rounds Facebook page, not really seen anything else since of interest. It's just been people sharing their thoughts, opinions, prayers and all that. We've been the holiday seasons. Why am I sounding American? I don't know, maybe I'm transitioning, turning into one. And also with New Year's Eve coming up, we did a poll recently about this supposed um, like evidence and multiple things going on, progress made, what Candice Cooley said. Is it going to be revealed by the end of 2022 or going into 2023? It looks like it's going into 2023, okay? Now, one thing that Glitter Galaxy did say about Chase Venstra's court hearing or something, said that it happened just recent, but missed it, not in time. Though, don't want to get too confused, just from my Pooh's memory, I'm sure I covered a video previously about Chase Venstra. I don't know if it's Glitter Galaxy that um, mentioned it in the first place, or it might have been someone else. Sometimes I get a bit confused where Chase Venstra's court date, and I did do a video on this on my channel, so you can check back of it being pushed back, delayed or something, not being extradited yet, that being dragged out. And it was like, well, why? Is it because similar things to Brenner, how there's not enough evidence, a strong case built yet, so it's being delayed? You know, that type of stuff. But Glitter Galaxy said she missed the hearing or something, so I don't know what that was about. Um, if any of you know, feel free to list it down below. Maybe I can look back at my previous video just to make sense of it because it was the odd screenshot provided. And so it tells me it might have been from somebody else. Mm. But we can look into that later. Okay. So yeah, find Dylan Rouse Facebook page. Not too much there. But it seems like within the community once again, um, how could you wait? Things have heated up back. I mean, the way it seems to have gone, Right, so you, you got all these YouTubers all came in on the Dylan Brown's case. Some merged with one another. People formed alliances. Some bridges burnt down. Some backstabbing took place. Some raided one another. Clashes, conflict, the lot. Peace treaties, which lasted one day or so. And then, you know, um, went back at it again afterwards. Other people have split off since individual cell groups, people creating their own separate channels and branching off, walking away, because it's been a bit disastrous here and there for some people, and there you go. But once again, some things have heated back up. The uh, One of the core ones is Pancakes versus Jim Terry. That seems to have you know, still continued, but then the likes of Ty Corbin versus Pancakes heating up once again. I uh, might be able to show you the odd screenshot shortly to kind of like explain that or just a portion of it, okay? I'm going to tie it in with the YouTube comments shortly as well because I think Ty Corbin left a comment as well uh, explaining something, okay? Also, Pancakes as well, 
Maybe it's for a misunderstanding, can't quite remember, Weedle B briefly touched upon it, that Pancakes may have an issue with me, or that Pancakes thinks I have an issue with him in a bad way. Um, I don't, but that can be cleared up later. Weedle B plays a part as well. She's got caught in the middle, in a sense, but that can be all resolved afterwards, okay? Tying in with the whole secrets and exposing it's going down in this video later on so make sure to stick around if not this will come out and you'll have no choice but to stay okay you can be good good so i think what we should do is first of all highlight why is lance kelly's hair green where did that come from i probably missed something i don't know if it's because of christmas being an <laughs> being an elf <laughs> maybe uh, i don't know if it was a like a joke i don't know if it was um like a charity thing i, I don't know because i've not kept up with the channels because i've not been you know um looking into it for the past few days or whatever because of christmas and stuff and in between now so it's making me think does anyone else know why it's just because i looked at one of his recent videos his beard's gone his hair's green and i was like wait what's going on what the hell's this? Like, it, like the hair colour, the green, kind of like the Joker, okay? Without the face paint. That's what it reminded me of. So I was, I was a little bit confused by that, but there you go. Different transformation, I guess. Interesting. Um, is anyone else going to be dyeing their hair? I don't know. Um, has anyone in the chat right now ever dyed their hair? If so, feel free to... Leave a response down below. Yes, no, and uh, yeah. <laughs> At this rate, might as well do a poll. I don't know. Maybe that's uh, too far. Anyway, pull that aside. So let's get into the comments of the previous videos. And I think I've got two separate videos to get through as for the comments. Okay, we'll have a look at them. See if there's anything of interest, anything that needs to be explained, any questions, whatnot. Okay, let's move on now. Okay, so here we are on the first clip. We're going to scroll down to the bottom, check the comments out. First one, very, very intense, perfectly balanced. Okay, clear. Indiana says, end of the year thing, salty, I just read it wrong. So what Indiana is referring to there is in this video, I, I mentioned about Pancakes potentially quitting YouTube due to how or what was talked about previously. Indiana or originally highlighted it. Um, some people, um, the time of this video, were saying, oh, it's probably just like a, a method to get more attention, gain more views. You know, I can understand that because you do, you do get channels where they do genuinely quit YouTube and it might be because of numerous reasons and statistically speaking, the end last video tends to perform better than most of their other videos because it's like dramatic uh, the title and everything and the event the occasion so maybe that's what pancakes were pulling off but what turned out to be the case was it was just because it was reaching the end of the year for that channel for that year moving into the new year and continuing on so pancakes isn't going anywhere okay he's still present he's still here so I guess to some people it's no surprise, but just to clear that up, right? Clear up loose ends. Any other comments? Ellen Berg says, that is not Kurt's backhoe. And then what does this person say? Bitch are so us. Is that like toys are us, but called bitch are us? Okay. But then it says, bitch a saw, saw, saddle saw. Has this person come into Saddle Saw Bar and never came out the same way again? If so, I understand. But let's just read it. This person says, Fuck now, that's a compactor. That's, fuck, don't even know a motorhome from a travel trailer, let alone a compactor from Becco. Dude, please get a job. You're out of your element when it comes to this complicated fucking mess. So, I don't know why this person is replying back to Ellen because technically it seems like it's more aimed at me. Um, then again, my comment is below his. So I must have responded after he did. 
because it would have been the other way around if it was the other way around, right? Okay, don't know who that person is. We just check quickly. Are they a whingy whiner? Ah, uh, oh, is I think that's Kurt Wadsworth. Yeah, this is supposedly Kurt Wadsworth. Supposedly. You know, most of the people that saw this account previously in one of my videos they were all in agreement that it was the real Kurt Wadsworth interested in. So you've seen it where Ellenberg, Kurt Wadsworth, you know, getting on. You saw him when they were in the bar at night, in the dark, when um, Jim Terry was calling them or they were calling Jim, right? So I guess... I guess Kurt is defending Ellen here. I'm not too sure. I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, What? whatever. But we'll just check this out. Uh, we can't check the previous cons because it'll take us to other videos. But as you can see, for most part of it, it's a lot of resistance, bit of negativity, complaining, whinging and whining. You look at the recent comments on my videos previous history, he said, hey, fuck, please quit guessing about the shit in this case. Ask me and I will tell you. But when you talk shit, whatever, then he says, fuck no, this is not Dylan Rounds, my friend. Oh my God, you piss me off. You fucking making money on fucking this fucking that. What? That is not Dylan Rounds, my friend. What? What's I got to do with? And what's this? Fuck you all, as my dog says and confirms. Right. To be honest, Kurt, I mean, if this is the real Kurt, first of all, it could be a fake account. I'm not too sure. But whilst this supposed Kurt Wadsworth account is complaining, whinging and whining, just remember to yourself that that dog in your profile picture probably has more teeth than you do. And that's saying something, okay? Even about that dog chewing and biting on hard bones, right? And it still has more durable teeth. Wow. Wow. Quick look here. Anything of interest? Nope, not much. But that profile picture, I think it all begun in the past, previous video of mine, whenever it was. And I think he might have been complaining about my profile picture, first of all, saying I look creepy or I look um, like something. I can't remember, to be honest. And then I just responded back saying, well, to be honest, your quality of your profile picture is a bit piss poor, blurry. I mean, you need some photography lessons, right? And then he kind of got a bit annoyed by that and then uh, went off on one. Didn't hear from him for a while and he showed back up once again. So, yeah, the most interesting part is, whilst you can correct people if there's a bit of information done wrong, a bit of misinformation, you just do it in a normal, neutral way, right? not the end of the world you just clear it up speak somewhat calmly because when you start going off on one losing get getting angry you've lost control first of all and secondly can you take them seriously probably not whereas if they talked in a normal monotone voice uh, an average voice then maybe you could take them more serious and as well for someone to get so angry and get their um their glasses in such a twist, right? Maybe there's a broken, dodgy lens somewhere, probably behind the counter top. But that level of resistance makes you think, hmm, is Kurt Wadsworth, supposedly the real Kurt Wadsworth, getting into a bit of a tiff because, what, the truth is coming out? Something's getting close. Did I cover something in one of my previous videos which revealed something which people don't want revealing? You know what I'm saying? And I'm just basing it off on past experience with previous cases where I looked into something, I pointed something out, and then resistance followed, saying, oh, you need to stop, or, oh, um, you know, what to use force and silence you, you know, that type of stuff. So I don't know if we're seeing a recurring pattern, maybe. But yeah, leave your thoughts down below. Have you come across this user, bitch arsoras? Have you... Have you come across this supposed Kurt Wadsworth account before? Yes? No? Leave your thoughts. I mean, you've also got to look at patterns and behaviour, right? Of these certain accounts. Right, it's all by one person or multiple. And then the other accounts which are more known, 
Is there a certain pattern of behaviour, a certain attitude? If so, maybe they link together, maybe they associate themselves with each other, right? Different people forming packs, groups. What else do we have here? Wayne says, LIDAR is the drone footage you can use to monitor the ground. Anything dug up at any amount of time will show disturbance. Any time soil is put back will show disturbance. Okay, I understand that. That's to do with the full spectral drone when it was gifted, handed to Candice Cooley. Diesel Brothers first came in to operate it, followed by that big push search where they were used once again. Mob Crew Chris got involved, EquiSearch got involved with the drones. Do you remember that? So that all makes sense. Now, the thing that interests me here, LiDAR is the drone footage, as worded here. And that's how it was worded too with that plane, the supposed plane that flew over 50 to 55 weeks ago now or so. You remember that? I think it was Jim Terry or Ty Corbin mentioned it, maybe Black Dove at some point. That plane flew over Candice Cooley's house, scanned the area. So if LIDAR is used to show soil disturbance and that plane was described as a LIDAR plane back then, so that makes you think, oh, so they were not just scanning Candice Cooley's house, but her garden, the surrounding area, just in case what? The idea that maybe Candice Cooley buried Dylan Rounds in her own backyard? Makes you think, doesn't it? Seems a bit far-fetched. Hmm. I mean, could you even tie it into uh, an actual theory? I think we'll just do it very briefly now, because as an independent video, it probably could cause a bit of resistance, right? So if you're tying it in with that whole LIDAR, soil disturbance, Candice Cooley's home being scanned, you got track marks back at Dylan's place when he went missing, you got Dylan's personal pickup truck being altered with the seat, right? Well, who's, you know, short enough to adjust a seat like that? Candice Cooley, because she's like, what, five foot four, five foot three? So she would have to adjust the seat so it would fit her. And then what? And maybe called someone, got someone else to do the dirty work, take Dylan out, and then Candice Cooley drove Dylan all the way back to her home and then buried him in the backyard. I mean... And then that's then there was like a tip off, or there was some kind of suspicion from people, maybe because of Candice Cooley and her attitude, her behaviour, how she taught, how she was at times, what something like that. And then they catched on, contacted someone, group organisation, lidar plane brought in to test, surveil, surveil the area just in case. Hmm. That's that's <laughs> you know that's uh, just a theory that you get the idea of how it can. You know, transpire from one thing to another, right? So you got that. Joseph, being busy, busy boy. Mm -hmm. Linda. Oh my God, we've got a couple of Lindas, haven't we? We've got Linda Gushing. I mean, Linda Cushing. We've got Linda Guess. And we've got, what's the other one? Linda Ro Begins with an R, I think. Linda something. Three Lindas. Interesting. They said, and this is referring to the video up top, the first trailer is a motorhome. You can get in the driver's seat and drive it like a car. Yeah, I'm aware of that. The other trailer is a five wheel. You have to hook it up to pull it with your truck in the bed of the truck. Yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, there you go. You comment liked on the spot. Wow. So, yeah, I mean... I, can't, I, can't, I understand the trailers, the difference between them. Just trying to figure out whose are they? Who did they belong to, right? Dylan had two trailers back at his farm. One he kind of stayed in from time to time, or at least cooked the odd bit of food, right? And then the other trailer looked like it was just for storage, from the looks of it. So did Brenner, did Don Haitley, did Chase Venstra have multiple trailers where they stayed at from time to time. I mean, with Chase Venstra and his homestead in the past back in Montello, um, that had multiple trailers. Some of them were his, others were not. Okay. As for Don Haitley, I don't know about his trailers. As for Brenner, technically he had two trailers, 
but one burnt down a year or two ago previous, so he's only left with one. Let me know in the chat if you know of any other trailers, either Brenner, Don Haitley owns, whether they're abandoned, in use up to a certain point, you know, feel free to leave a comment down below, okay? What does Indiana have to say here? Okay. To answer one of my own questions, who put up the $5,000 bail on behalf of Jim Brenner? The answer, Brenner himself put up his own bail money. Now, I'm not an expert when it comes to all this court stuff and um, bail and this and that and all these key words, I'll be honest. But one thing I will say is, the way it's been worded with time, I mean, $5,000, I don't know what that means to people. To some, it might be a lot of money. To others, it might not. I don't know. And you've got to think of the conversion rate as well because it's in dollars, right? But just basing off how it's been worded previously by Candice Cooley, by Doug from mm, No Thanks and other channels, that Brenner was a slob, he was squatting, he wasn't working or something, or not really worked much at all. So did he have much money with him? I think some people were saying he was on disability allowance or something. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but that's what I heard. So if that's the case, then, you know, did he have enough money for the bail? I mean, he must do if, it's, if that's the answer, 5000 It's just because I didn't think he had much. Oh. I mean, he's living in his trailer. Um, I guess he doesn't buy much. I mean, okay, he might have guns, he might have ammunition, but wouldn't that have been stolen, right? Like the gun, the twenty two caliber. I mean, you're not just going to walk into a gun store and say, oh, I'm going to buy this for $10,000. I'm going to buy about 50 cal for $55,000 or something. How, how, well, it's probably not 55000 probably 14000 or something. Brenner wouldn't do that. Ben is more likely to steal weapons, right? So maybe he just saved up money. And, yeah. And then it kind of went to waste, I guess, because then he was arrested again afterwards. Um, What's the actual date of this? So, uh, I guess this is to do with... I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. This is to do with, what, June the 10th? June the 11th? when Brenner was first arrested temporarily for a day, and then the following day after he was released. Is that to do with the bail situation? I'd assume so. And then fast forward to June 16th, when he was arrested, uh, the gun charge, or gun charges, depending on how it's worded, and then he's been in, in um, jail since, right? I hope, hopefully I got that correct. Yeah. And then what's this underneath? To answer one of Wallach Ref's questions, when Don Haitley made his statement to the police in regards of Brenner asking him to hold onto some guns, free and all, address given from informant was 7000 South Pilot Mountain Road, Wendover, Utah. Both answers can be found at that link. Dylan Rounds discussion, Box Elder, Deep Dive, JB Documents, mm, no thanks, Doug. Okay, could take a look. So, let me just get um, an understanding of this. When Don Haley made his statement to the police, the address given from the informant, the informant being Don Haley, I assume, 7000 South Pilot Mountain Road, Wendover, Utah. Right, so that address, is that the address of where Don Haley lives? Or is that the address of where Don Haley was at during the time of giving his statement? If you're there, Indiana, which one? Just so it's clearer. Because if that was the address of Don Hatley's actual place of living, then that would be very useful. And if not, I mean, it, it can just clear the confusion up. Let's move on. DB, I don't know if this DB account is what I've seen before, unless I'm getting mixed up with another account. Oh, DP? Oh, God, we got we got DD and DP. My God, DDP? 
Isn't that a fucking delivery service or something? <laughs> oh my god. I don't think I'm getting mixed up there. Never mind. Let's continue. So DD says the truck with the pipe coming out is most likely to be for fertilizing and or watering crops. When I was a kid, I used a truck like that a lot. If you don't know what it's referring to, I don't think I can show on well, I can kind of show on the screen. Um if you look at the picture just above the like the thumbnail, you want to call it that. Kind of like the left hand side of the screen, upper left, you can see like a white vehicle parked up on the ground. That's what DD is referring to, okay? Because it's got that pipe coming out the back of it. Now, I don't know if that was the one shown in one of Salty Pancake's previous videos. I know when he was with someone, maybe Kurt, in the past, and they were at the farm or the grain shed, it was as if they were operating one of the pieces of farm equipment because the engine was turned on. It, it was like stationary. It wasn't doing anything, but you could hear the engine running. I don't know if it was one of Kurt Wadsworth's vehicles. That's why they had access to it and able to use it or not. But I just remember it. It just kind of reminded me. Okay. Oh, DD also says, a backhoe is the real name for it, lol. That's why it's not a digger. Though I'm from Canada, so maybe that what you call them over there. Uh, love your videos. Okay, that's good of them. So shout out to DD with a capital D. Okay. We've got Brian. Brian, what does he say? The fifth wheel trailer next to the SUVs has a solar panel array hooked up to it for power. That one was more than likely being lived in. Panels are usually put away during poor weather because they are expensive. In the second picture of this farm area, you can see the pivot in the background. Okay, I'll have to check back at that farm area. Oh wait, is that to do with like the image what I've got on screen already? I don't know how to look back at that. Hmm. I mean, it depends how prominent it really is because when you've seen pivots on Google Earth, whether it be fully developed ones, green circle pivots, or the one what you saw in Lucerne, which was like north, north, east of the grain shed across the railroad tracks, which may or may not be Dylan's pivot, right? That one was more underdeveloped, but you could still see the circle of it. It was very prominent. It stood out, right? So if Dylan's actual pivot is near his farm, then why was it not visible in 2020? Is it because the pivot didn't exist back then? Because 2020, Dylan would have been, you know, um, on the farm or here and there would have been. So does anyone know the actual year when Dylan's pivot was constructed. Not successfully uh, reaping the rewards of like a full-grown crop or anything like that, but just the actual pivot being implemented, the circle of it, the radius, and like how you see on Google Earth with other farms, right? What year was it implemented? Because I looked at 2020, I believe it was 2020, and there was still no pivot in sight. And I did try looking, unless I need to look again. Just let me know your thoughts down below, okay? What's this? Oh, and as well, speaking of which, that trailer, which has a solar panel on, who would use a solar panel? Would Brenner? Would it be Don's? Would, like, who? I mean, you've got to take in mind that Don is... Okay, at the time, living elsewhere in Lucent. He's not on the land of the grain shed. It's only Brenner. So what, did Brenner have a solar panel? Did Brenner have a TV? Like what? Why is a solar panel there? Just a um, just brief question. And who it belongs to. What we've got here, smooth fishing. You could dig a big hole in the ground and put someone in it and then plough it and no one ever know the ground being disturbed. There was turned ground where Dylan was going to plant. Okay. So, I guess it's to do with this whole LIDAR soil disturbance, right? If, it's, if it appears more natural, soil disturbance, it's not going to pick up the same or 
it'll be written off by the people analysing it as oh, just simple farm work. Is, is this what smooth fishing is referring to? I guess so. And the bit where it says where Dylan was going to plant, what with the whole seeding situation, Friday the 27th of May, that it was already turned over. Or afterwards, I assume afterwards, right? I mean, we're trying to tie it in in some way or another at Dylan's farm, where the pivot is at Dylan's farm, where the ground has been turned over since or so, there's possible activity down there, the, the truck has been power washed down there, uh, the suspect or a suspect went down there to return the keys and the guns. You can't write Dylan's farm off. Whilst maybe Dylan might have been attacked, hurt, killed on the spot at the grain shed, the suspect or one of them, whoever, did return back to the farm whether that was with Dylan or not, right? We've looked at the previous theories in the past, that maybe, and tying it in with what other people have said loosely here and there, that maybe the pivot somewhere near the ground there is where Dylan is at. I mean, there must be something down there, first of all, for Candy's Cooley to mention in that post, referring to a previous question, as I covered in my recent video about the crop like I'm being cornered off or something as the piece of evidence was found nearby so it's like well what piece of evidence is that is it footprints someone walked down there and then turned back is it someone was buried there does it tie in with what smooth fishing has said about where there was going to be planting taking place there was also additional activity you know one of those things where it's it's kind of unanswered, open for interpretation, I guess. Oh, he's... <laughs> looks like Kurt Wadsworth's appeared again. Bitch arse us. Says, hey, fuck, please quit guessing about shit in this case. Ask me and I will tell you. But when you talk shit, I want to scream, you dipshit. Thank you for the positivity. Much appreciated. I mean, if I can make... Kurt Wadsworth scream like oh my god that's interesting I mean has anyone heard Kurt Wadsworth scream before or is it normally a moan or a groan I don't know maybe I just have an effect on people from time to time it's just one of those things right anything else wrangle Says, Brenner is too clumsy and fat. <laughs> Maybe Kurt or Don helped him. Those statements from Kurt about Dylan held in captive just doesn't sit right. I mean, it seems like it was more of an opportunistic, impulsive act by Kurt at the time. It was a two-in-one, killing uh, two birds with one stone, right? Supposedly receiving info from a psychic or it be in Montello or nearby or so, that reward money, the $20,000 at the time, by Justin setting it up, implementing it right on the spot, and also the dislike for Avales and Chase Venstra, right? I guess you could say it was a time for Kurt to say, right, pass on this information, hope for the best, fingers crossed, Dylan may be found, I get the $20,000 reward money and to the people I hate in which other locals may hate too are sent away, locked up for good. You see? Now it didn't work out, of course. And that's possibly why Kurt has not done anything else since. Not come out with any more false info, reaching out to the family to try and get more reward money. You know what I'm saying? Maybe doing it once was enough because if he did it any more times, he would appear more of a suspect more dodgy, more attention focused on him, which he probably doesn't want because it might get people in trouble, it might get himself in trouble. So I can't understand that. What does Anna say? Anna says, just maybe he was hit by accident by one of the trucks. James Brenner panicked and he hid the body. There's no blood on the scene except a spot on his boot. 
From what I gathered thus far, I feel it wasn't deliberate. Maybe James Brenner lost his temper and drove the equipment hastily. Haste makes waste. It may not be deliberate murder. So that was to do with the video of mine where we were talking about the alternative theory that Brenner may have snapped, may have not been thinking, um, you know, you, you weren't in the right frame of mind in that moment, a bit irrational possibly, took his frustration out, reversed the truck hard, fast. Dylan was behind it in the grain shed trying to help him reverse in. Dylan gets knocked over, may have a seizure, head trauma, injury, and that's, you know, what causes it. And also that biological matter being found on the ground in that spot. That's what Anna is referring to. But the good thing is, what Anna's tied in is the whole snapping, right? That's been one of the key themes throughout this case, this like mystery, if you want to call it that, too. Shack ladies referred to it as well. Keywords such as the gate, snapping, Brenner's known history for that, acting on the spot, not planned, that type of behaviour. And to be honest, sometimes when you snap, you can also make a mistake at the same time and then regret it shortly afterwards. Now, did Brenner regret what he did? Probably not because he didn't confess, right? So he couldn't have felt that guilty um, unless he was kind of scared, shook up thinking, oh no, I'm, I'm going to get arrested regardless. Oh no, I don't want to go back. Let's try and cover it up or something. Who knows? But yeah, we'll do a poll right now. I know we've not done many. Do you think that Brenner's history, patterns of snapping, losing his temper on the spot. Do you think on this occasion, Brenner snapped and in the process made an accidental mistake, accidental death of Dylan? Yes or no? I'll probably word it a bit better or a bit clearly in the poll, but feel free to vote if you want to, okay? Do we have anything else? We've got Miranda Platzer once again. Shout out to her. Uh, she says, I have always heard and seen that Candy's Cooley said Dylan weighed 145 to 160 pounds. Okay. D do you agree with that? Have you heard it worded like that as well? I mean, as for me, I mean, it's one of those things where, um, as for the posters, most of the posters said 160 pounds, 5 foot 10. It was really only the Nam Us report where it was different, okay? The Nam Us one was more vague. It said 145 to, I think it was 160. Or it might have been 125 to 145. We'd have to look back at it, but... As for the, the reading and being six foot as well, it was like, huh, that seems a bit out. It seems a bit vague. Why is it done like that? Is it because the police don't know the true information of Dylan? Why can't they just ask the parents? Why can't they just look at documents, uh, medical doctor reports and documents, which will give Dylan's height, his statistics, his weight, you know, it makes sense. But then again, maybe it was vague because it was under the impression that if Dylan's gone missing, he might not be eating, he might lose weight, he might be he might become ill because of it. So that's the only other thing I can think of. So moving on, we've got Tom Evans. Shout out to him once again. What does that say? Merry Christmas. Okay. Thank you for giving us a platform. Mm-hmm. Edward Cavalier says these photos seem like pieced into place. Does any person that use equipment just leave it wherever? Okay, so I understand that. I mean, yeah, they do seem to be arranged in a certain order, both at the grain shed and at Dylan's farm, but I guess that's just how it was and how it has always been. I mean, you look back at Google Earth Pro, you go back to 2013, even in 2013, half the equipment that was out there is kind of arranged and organised as seen how it is today, right? So it's just been that similar pattern with time. But it's interesting, though, because you think about it. Dylan Rounds has got his own, I guess, mindset, his own organisation and how he likes it or how he does things. And yet, even before Dylan moved into the place, 
whoever owned it previous. There was equipment there at the grain shed and it was lined up on the sides, left out, looked like it was abandoned, right? So maybe it just followed followed that pattern, okay? I mean, it's interesting how certain items were moved away from the farm. And I don't mean the trailer because that's like, well, of course, taken in for evidence, but like the backhoe, um, I believe someone said that was used to dig up land or to assist the police or the police did it themselves, but then slashed the tires afterwards so it couldn't be moved. Kind of weird that, don't know why you would do that. You don't want it taken away. We'll just have a brief, brief talk about that right now. So if the backhoe tires were slashed or at least the back one was, why did they do that? The police, did they do that? Was it the FBI? Did they do that and why? Was it to ensure that no one would take it away because it's used for evidence? Because it's a crime scene? Well, if that was the case, then why did they not do it with the grain truck? Why did they not do it with the trailers then? It was so sure about that. Makes you think, doesn't it? Just weird isolating one piece of equipment, one vehicle from the rest. Is it because they've got an agenda against Kurt Wadsworth? Is it because they've are suspicious of him? I don't know, leave your thoughts down below to why you think the ties were slashed, the deep reason behind it, if there is one. Any more comments? Yep, there you go, Merry Christmas. Deb D, we've got another DD. There we go. Awesome video, great video, thank you. Shout out to them. We've got Dash Rip Rock. Oh my God, when I first saw that username, I was thinking, oh no, is that Dip Rock? Because it was a Dip Rock account in the past with Kenny Veach who sent a very, very long email to me advising of me to move away from the Kenny Veach case and cover other mysteries for the because it's more practical. But I think it was done more in a way that they didn't want the case to be covered anymore because they're possibly in on it from Godlike Productions as well. So dodgy account there. There you go. But what does this normal account Dash Rip Rock says? He says, Dylan may never be found. He could be buried somewhere in the desert. He could have been sold into slave trade in some foreign land. Let's face it, he was a cute boy, small stature. So that is possible. He may be very well have left on his own. He could be in a Maui somewhere on the beach wearing a Speedo drinking punch. Wow. That's one way of looking at it. And this is a cute small boy. It wasn't that small. Oh, God. Is it one of those things that say, Actually, I only date guys over six foot. Anything below that is not good enough because the measurements do not come in very well. I'm disappointed. You need to be bigger. You need to be better. <laughs> that, let's just remember, Dylan Rounds, okay? Depending on which report you look at, one said six foot. The other one said five foot ten. Or something like that. If you're five foot eleven, you can round it up to six foot, basically. You know what I'm saying? But five foot ten is still quite tall, to be fair. Okay. Actually, isn't I'm sure uh, isn't is Maria five foot ten? I don't know. That's a completely different story. That, <laughs> but you know, not he's not exactly small. As for Dylan's um, weight, one hundred and sixty pounds. I mean, he's he's not he's definitely not overweight, nowhere near. Is he underweight? I guess not, but he's on the lighter side, right? So you come across someone like Brenner or Don Haitley, they might not be as tall, but they're a bit more bigger, bulky, heavier. You can't pick him up. You can't throw him around. It'll be the other way around. So I guess that. As for Dylan's age, being fairly young, I mean, you could tie that in. What, is Dylan naive? Not from what I know of. If you think different, leave your thoughts down below. But the idea of being sold into some kind of slave trade, that's a theory I've not heard before. Have any of you? We could do a poll right now in a way. Yeah, just a brief one. The poll can be, do you think Dylan was sold as a slave to somewhere yes no feel free to vote right now because that would be an alternative way of looking at it 
do we have anything to go off from that? I mean, it's been the other way around, hasn't it? People have been talking about either Mexican workers or just the odd um, foreign individual brought in and uh, working there, whether it's exploited or not. Differing theories about that. Don't know how truthful it is, but there's been talks of that, right? And some people have created timelines too about these foreign workers coming on in working for Dylan. But what about the other way around? Dylan going elsewhere. I mean, Dylan's done custom farming, worked for other people on other people's land. So maybe he's also done it on this occasion, but not by his choice. But who would sell him, right? Who owns Dylan? No one from what I know of, unless someone stepped on in and pretended, acted like they owned Dylan because they didn't like Dylan doing his own thing. But who would be jealous enough to do that? Who supposedly has experience with trading or doing dodgy stuff across the pond, if you want to call it that. I mean, based off rumours, and that's only it, as a possible idea, theory, could it be Kurt Wadsworth? Did Kurt Wadsworth sell Dylan to someone else? To a different country? Is it in Mexico? Um, further afar? Or just to a different state? Different farmland? I don't know. We're just basing it off that theory, trying to tie it in. Because the rumours previously has been Kurt Wadsworth, I don't know if it's to do with making $200,000 shipping things over or importing, exporting, something to do with the Philippines, something to do with women. I can't quite tie it all into one, but if any of you know that, a few key buzzwords catch your attention, your memories, feel free to list it down below. It was just kind of scattered about. Maybe it was Jim Terry talking about it at one point. I mean, you never know. I mean, what do I remember? Unrelated, not tied with this case but a previous person in the past who turned out to be a knob in the end okay in 2021 bitch but they talked about they had a friend who was much 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 older than them the person was about 50 years old a bit dodgy there. I don't know why I do, you know, interact with a much, much, much older person in that way, but who knows, you know, big, big daddy issues, probably. But yeah, they said that they were talking to that old guy. He didn't have anyone, but he was looking online to meet up with someone from the Philippines, a woman, but of a younger age or so. And when you hear that, you think, ah, one of those, yeah. You know, you've seen it, you heard it before in, like, news reports and stuff like that, etc. No surprise there. So does it apply within the Dylan Rounds case? But on this occasion, it might not be to do with females, but more to do with males. Mm. I don't know, it's just like a rough theory. That's all I'm saying, okay? Because there's not enough evidence to, like, reinforce it or to go hard in on it and focus. So we just leave it in the pool of thoughts if you want to add on in addition feel free if not if you want to counter make sure to do so in the comment section okay maybe kurt wadsworth may show up again or the supposed kurt wadsworth right okay so that was it for this video the comment section fairly long but some interesting points and uh things to refer back to now let's move on to my second latest video and see if there's anything mentioned there and i believe ty corbin shows up Right, so we're on the second one here. We go to the bottom and read up. Well, so it's apologies about the unexpected video. But that's true, because I'm supposed to be having a break, but because I saw the odd bit of news, and it was relevant at the time and fairly important, I thought it needed to be covered, just in case people didn't know about it. Like, with being a certain event like this, more uh, straight from the horse's mouth, if you want to call it that, Candy Cooley. You know, just uh, to let people know. And what did people respond to? Weedleby, apologise for what? Yeah, shout out to Weedleby, because as I said, if you're currently here in the chat, Weedleby does make an appearance later on in this video. You know, both as a video response, but also physically, she does make her presence in the video. So make sure to be on the lookout for that. Christy there, and then we've got that guy there. 
got Glitter Galaxy, okay, uh, and then Joseph as well. Anything else? No, nope, not much there. We go. Tom says it's all warmed up, but freezing last two days here. Almost snow is gone. He did mention, I think, in the previous video before that, or the video after this one, that he didn't need a shovel anymore because it's improved. There's Linda. So it's been very cold, freezing. Any response there? Yeah, just talking about stuff like that. Okay. Cleo. Okay, I've been a naughty, naughty boy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Calm down, Cleo. Then we got Indiana. I mean, some of this isn't related to the but I'm just going to read it anyway because I didn't do it properly the first time, okay? So quick, on the spot, little story time. You want to get comfortable if you want to relax. I'll read this story out, presented by Indiana, okay? She says, oh, come on, Warlight Ref, an unexpected video. You just couldn't get enough of us, could you? As soon as the Christmas dinner was over, and after a night of entertaining the family with your charades. My God, Indiana, you were completely wrong. It was not a game of charades. It was a fucking quiz. And guess what? When it came to the American questions, I got nearly every single one correct, including one to do with the president and the fucking stone wall. We the people! I'm transitioning into American. Fully real American. I'm going to pull out my guns. I'm going to increase the load of them. My biceps are bigger than ever. Yes, cut the fucking Fifth, Sixth Amendment of Warlike Wrath. Welcome to the USA. Okay, it wasn't quite to that extent, but you get the idea. Uh, where are we at now? Apologies about that. Indiana says, it was under the bed quilt. What? what? Who was? You was? It was under the bed quilt with your torch and phone to screw out one last video. <laughs> My God, I nearly, I nearly read that a little bit wrong there. Screw out one, fuck me. Well, not literally, shit. To keep us all entertained over the Christmas period, to which we are all the more than grateful for, because once Boxing Day came, we have all turned into zombies without you. The cats, the kitty cats, were ripping the wallpaper off the walls with their claws, the dog has rolled a rug up and the last bit of whiskey I had put into the fish tank has diluted out and the fish are all flat out on their backs and the bottom of the tank. But once I said, oh look, Raffi, oh no, is that my new nickname? Raffi? I sound like a dog. Oh, no, not Raffi. Oh no. He has a new video coming out for us all tonight. The cats have stopped their scratching. The dog has buried his rug in the garden. And the fish are all flipping out in trepidation. Never heard of that word before. Bit of an exaggeration. Hmm. As Miss Fluffy, one of the cats, is just sat here with the slit of one eye open. On account, she doesn't quite like Candice Cooley, but hey... You can't have it all your own way, can you, uh, Miss Fluffy? Welcome back, Warlike Raph. Very good, Indiana. Very good. Now, the thing is, when reading that, she's talking about the cats are going crazy, the cats are scratching, they're losing the minds. Is Indiana referring to her own cats? Or are we secretly talking about, in code name the cats in the chat? I'm not quite sure. Maybe I got the wrong end of the stick. That tends to happen more than often these days. Oh my god. Do you have any responses, Val? Weedleby says, Oh my god, Indiana, you are an amazing writer. Love it. I like Bob the Builder. He's more reputable. Handy Andy hasn't been the same since losing his title. Excuse me? When did I lose the title? When did I stop becoming handy? You know? No more Handy Andy? Where's the hand gone? Like, has it been decapitated? What's happened? The title's been lost. What does that make you then? Indie, indie what? I don't know. Thank you, I was just born with vivid imagination. I see that. Need to write some skits for Gorilla Jack. Oh, okay, maybe some stuff is going on behind the scenes, down the line, who knows? Maybe Indiana might start collaborating with Jack. All things can happen, right? Who knows what will go down by the end of this year, or maybe going into the new year. I guess we'll see. 
Anything else? Cleo. There you go. Weedle B says, I saw the gorilla has been off the rails recently, taking crazy vitamins and making frets. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. Slow down, Weedle B. Slow down. I mean, we're rushing into things already. As I said, Weedle B, later in this video, the secrets are revealed and it will be explained. There is exposing on Gorilla Jack's behalf. Gorilla Jack will be exposed. Warlight Ref will be exposed. The secrets are going to be revealed. Calm down, Weedleby. It will come. Okay? What's this? Lol. Well, if he shows up, you know Warlight can handle it peaceably or crack the whip. Oh, no. Okay. Right, now we move on to Dylan Round's related stuff once again. Patsy Rainwater, in which I think it was Linda or Indiana that replied back, calling it Rainwater. No, it was Christy saying Rainwater. What was that to do with? I had no fucking clue. Anyway, Patsy says, Dylan had his mind set to be a farmer. He had so much going for him to prove that he can grow things. I wish that all the younger generation would put their mind to do things to help them when time gets hard. Press of the family. Was Dylan able to plant his seeds or he disappeared before he could? Was the truck empty? Check the replies quickly if it's answered. There we go. Indiana is on the case with a reply snapping in like that. So she says the truck was left one fourth to one third full. The seed was sown errantly. The water pumps kept breaking down. Dylan's father, Justin, made the decision to close the water pumps down and the crop failed. Though, although the crops may have failed, from what Candice Cooley said, from, was it Candice Cooley's mother or some grandmother somewhere down the line within the family, ended up assisting with the crop, taking some of it away, and then turning it into necklaces, you remember? A bit of crop, a bit of seed or plant, which grew encased in some kind of like glass, see-through bead and pendant or something attached onto a necklace, you remember that? And that tied in with the whole discussion of when Kenny's Cooley added in by saying that the crop was like cornered off and evidence was found there too. Interesting, I see. I mean, I don't know what will happen in the future with Dylan's farm, with the, with the grain shed. I mean, Kenny Scully has said that it's not been sold yet, and I don't think it will. I'd say that it'll probably likely be sold once Dylan has been found. That's what I would say. I mean, the whole in memory of Dylan, I can understand that, but they've got the memorial, or they can take items away and then display them or turn them into something, then... That's probably what they would do. A darker mindset, what other people may think. Other people may say, yeah, when Dylan's found, they'll probably sell the farms and then Kenny's Cooley gets more money or something. That's what some people could say. But wasn't it the grandparents that sorted Dylan out in the first place? If I'm, if I'm correct in saying. Uh, that talk, what we saw on uh, that forum, was it 640 acres of land and some of it was given to Dylan or something, that some money was exchanged at some point, possibly. So if it was sold, who would it be sold to? Would it be sold back to the grandfather, or would it be sold to somebody else? Could there be kind of family conflict going on there? Who receives the money, who gets it back? What not? Makes you think, right? Um. Yeah, there you go. That answers that. What's this one? Indiana once again. A short one for Weedleby. Blew the feathers right off. Cats are lounging, small puppies gruff. One hen a strutting, just doing its stuff. Sunny afternoon, we can't get enough. Gramps then snorts some of his snuff. One loud sneeze, hen is left in the buff. Okay, whatever that means. I remember, I remember in the past, in high school, we had to look and analyse a poem which was to do with a red velvet curtain and piercing right on into it, piercing through into the external soft layers, which turned out to be a cat flap. Interesting. I don't know why they decided to write that poem, but that's what we had to look at. 
Great times. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Ty Corbin. Here we are. This is what Ty Corbin has to say. There's a few comments, okay. Ty Corbin says, shit cakes or Sally Wadsworth is more accurate. Sally Wadsworth? What the hell is that? Transitioning into a woman or something. I don't know. I guess he's probably meant salty Wadsworth because of the whole, you know, ordeal going on in the past and like supposedly being paid the Wadsworth tailing to come onto the show of pancakes and to talk and stuff. I guess that's what Ty's going on about. Let's just see the responses. I said, has there been any more tension drama since? By absence, I meant my absence because I've not been around. Ty Corbin says, Salty shit cake has been doing his best to discredit anyone that believes or says that Brenna did this. There are things I know that others don't. Why won't Kurt take a polygraph? Brenna and I believe... What's that? Brenna, I believe, called Kurt that Saturday. What transpired, I do not know. But it's evident that Dylan's remains are somewhere and the fastest way to find him is through Brenna. Why won't Kurt talk to Brenna? When I've talked to Robert and Chase, the only reason I can think of is that Kurt... I would incriminate Kurt. Okay. We'll analyse that in a second. Anything else? Um... Okay, so Joseph just uh, wishing him well. Ty says thank you. Okay, so this bit here, interesting. And um, and after this, we will move on to, I guess, pancakes response. Okay, I won't show it all because of, I mean, technically it's like public information because pancakes revealed it himself. But I'm not going to add on to that. Like, it can be explained later, right? But just give different sides of the story at least. Okay, so we balance it out. But yeah, it's a bit about pancakes shows resistance in some way when someone believes, says, covers a video that Brenner did this. So it's like downplaying it. Is that the sense? I mean, it seems a bit odd because when I criticised, not criticised, when I associated Kurt Wadsworth within the case... In some way, you've seen at times where Pancakes has come on in and shown a bit of resistance, like recently with the Kurt Wadsworth backhoe, where Pancakes was like, yeah, whatever, it's already been done, it's already been looked at, oh, oh you use my footage, oh, I'll give you a copyright strike, oh, and it's like, whoa, what's, what's suddenly gone on here? Whereas other times when I've covered it about Brenner, which has been more, more often, right, because he is one of the main guys, main talking points, I'm not seen as much resistance from Pancakes, and when Pancakes has come on in, he wasn't discrediting my video or my coverage on someone else aside from um, Kurt Wadsworth, right? Though he did maybe criticise other people in the chat or externally, like calling out Ty Corbin at times in the chat. But that was like separate from my video. He only appeared because like it was like a live premiere with a live chat so he could voice his opinion out loud. That's why Pancakes did what he did. But the times where he did aim it more at me, it was to do with either covering him in a video or covering Kurt Wadsworth. So that's from my experience. But here, Ty Corbin is saying that Pancakes will do his best discrediting anyone who talks about Brenner being involved, which is weird. I've not experienced it that way round. What do you guys think in the chat? Hmm? Leave your thoughts. The bit about Kurt taking a polygraph, but he hasn't. I mean, all the others have, right? Avales, Chase Wenstra, Don Haitley, Brenner, um, and then whoever else. I think even Ty Corbin was going to as well. Ty Corbin, if you're in the chat right now or catching up, leave a common a response somewhere um acknowledging if you want to if you wish to whether you've taken a lie detector test or not i did hear previously that that's what ty was going to do and he was going to cover a lot of mileage distance to go to one and answer questions yeah that's what i've heard i don't know if it fully took place right but uh, if anyone can reply down below, that would be helpful to confirm it or to dispel it, right? No harm in that. But yeah, 
Quite a few people, locals, camp nearby, have participated in one, whether it be by choice or not, right? Some have passed, others have failed, but why not Kurt? Why is, why is Kurt staying out of it, right? Hmm. And it says, Brenner, I believe, called Kurt that Saturday, so the 28th of May. Why would he do that then? That's unknown of. Could be to confirm, right, Dylan's been taken out. Kurt, can you come down, help me, maybe? If we need to do a separate video on this to spread more awareness directly, because this video is kind of a long one, we can do a shorter video just focusing back at this comment, like a recap, maybe as a map-based theory. You want to do that, maybe? Might not be as long, because if it was longer, it might become a bit too repetitive. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. I'll have to uh, note it down somewhere, right? Well, luckily, if uh, we're watching this video later, right? What I just said there will remind me to note it down later on. So that's good. It's like a reminder in its own right. So yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll do a poll right now, just as well as a reminder. Would you like to see some kind of smallish map analysis, story time, depicting Brenner calling Kurt on the day Dylan went missing? Would you like that? just to try and give a theory, an idea. Because the way it's worded at the moment is, it's unknown of what took place or the discussion, but something may have happened from the looks of it. So we could look into the theories and ideas. Make sure to vote right now, and um, I'll know what to do, um, I guess, after New Year's Day or so. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Anything else here? Mm, not really. But the bit about Kurt... The polygraph test, I guess I can give more opinions and reasons on that in that other video, the map analysis one, the whole phone call thing, right? Make sure to remind me about that as well, the polygraph, give my opinions and true thoughts about it. But yeah, the fact that most people have taken, participated in it, but Kurt hasn't, does make you think, why not? Hmm. Anything else going on aside from that drama? Joseph, great holidays, uh-huh, Francois, oh, Kennedy says, I have my farm set to be a, okay, I'm not going to say that word, just because YouTube might blacklist it or something, or and highlight it as a bad word, even though it's not, you know, just like the, the, the wording of it, like, when it sounds like something else, when it's not, it's a bit stupid, that's where you say mining, doesn't sound as bad, or like Minecraft, but the ER makes it sound dodgy, because it sounds like OR, you know what I'm saying? Oh, God, what's this? Wait, is this another one? Oh, my God. Indiana. Okay, let's see what she says. Warlike Wrath withdrawals. Are you sure Cleo did not write this? Indiana. Hold on. Let's read it. Indiana says, No, Warlike Wrath. Over Crimbo and New Year, I'm starting to suffer from withdrawals. Less of those darn rat packers giving us all grief with all their troublesome quarrels, all of Warlike Wrath's loyal subjects just left to carrying on yapping on this blank page. Time spent wishing each other and Warlike Wrath and Mary Crimbo we as now engage. I hope it's a nice one where you all find comfort and joy and Joseph gets a new sex toy. Linda receives a late delivery of 12 boxes of the finest red wine. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Weedleby sets into the new year invited over to some silverback gorilla named Jack, where it wasn't long after a few iced cooled banana shakes they ended up in the sack. Interesting. Christy B, surrounded by all her furry friends, not the type of guys that dress up in costumes but animals, is enjoying her Christmas more than most with so many animals. No heating is required. She and her pets are as warm as toast, but make sure not to eat them. Now, I'm not so sure on Cleo the Playful Witch, for her withdrawals are going to be rife, hopefully okay, but for safekeeping, I think best to keep her away from the kitchen knife. Oh, 
Easy Jody. Wes Stump is no less grumpier, whether it is Christmas Day or not. To call him, it all sucks. He's eaten far too many California Reapers, chilies, peppers, and is suffering from reflux from both ends. Passing thoughts of Warlight Raff, keeping all of his rallies entertained. What a laugh. As to when embarking on his orders of bend over, his great granny was heard to rasp. Well, she's dead. Though not to worry, it won't be long and Warlight Raff will be back up <laughs> upon our screens with more mystery videos of disappearing people to hit us all with in his live streams, live video premieres. Then there's not to be forgotten Tom Evans. It was just that he was nowhere to found Tom is still away digging tunnels through the snow with his shovel deep underground. So until we meet again, I wish you all the best for Christmas and a coming new year. And may it be better than the last one we have all just had and be full of cheer and a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all those I missed. Moved from another post to here because I don't think anyone sees it where it was. Well, don't worry, Indiana. The whole fucking world has seen it right now. I hope you're happy with yourself. You know what? You better have your phone on charge because it's going to be calling all night long from all these fucking New York Times bestsellers. Forget about Glitter Galaxy and her photography skills. You're going to be in the fucking front page of every newspaper, man. My God, Indiana, you, you're on a roll. Not a fucking rug roll, but a literal roll like Indiana Jones escaping from that temple. I hope you, I hope you escape with that golden monkey, man. My God. So intense. What would your replies, though? Yeah, I managed to snag an elf with a big D. Interesting. Thank you for sharing. Well... We know why Joseph Lloyd has been busy since. Hmm. Okay. Do we have any other comments, though? Or is that about it? That looks like it is it. But we do not end there. Okay, so you saw that about the Dylan Browns, looking at the questions, bits of info, interesting points, and even Ty Corbin showing up, and even Kurt Wadsworth, supposedly. So you can leave all your thoughts down below about that. We are nowhere near finished yet. We've still got quite a lot to look at, okay? Including the exposing and revealing the dark truth behind certain people, okay? In the meantime, though, we need to just have a look from, I guess, Salty Pancake's point of view, as I did say earlier. I'll show a screenshot shortly before we get into that. Um, the whole talk with Jim Terry and Pancakes still facing off against one another, I guess in different ways. It might have entitled that in maybe Pancakes videos as well. I don't know if it's internally, externally, who it was caused by, I don't know because I've not really looked much into it. But I saw something like Jim Terry had people calling into his channel or something about people being swatted by the police where um, there must have been like some kind of anonymous call or tip-off. Police have then called round to a viewer's house to, I guess, check on in or maybe to make a possible arrest. And it turned out to be like a false call in the end. But, you know, I mean, you've seen it with like Twitch streamers on Twitch where people have been doing a live stream and then there's been some police raid on the spot and it has, it's been recorded as well on camera as the police has come into the room with guns as well. So it could be like a prank, like a form of revenge, but it's like, if you look at it in some way, that okay, certain YouTubers, key people that might participate with other channels, make their appearance, their voice known or heard, associate themselves with the wrong people or join one group make an alliance with somebody then it makes you a public enemy in the eyes of some people so then you get targeted obviously I've been targeted and I've not really associated with anyone but that might be because I've not associated with anyone so it's like a free-for-all but what I've seen with time and supposedly the way it's worded 
providing it's you know the truth and it's not a load of bullshit is that viewers actual viewers aren't either safe too from the looks of it so it's like if people watch certain people's channels then they become a target as well just like that indirectly i can kind of understand why if some people was to give a super chat or a super thanks they may not or they may do like what Jim Terry does, where they um, go through via PayPal because then it's anonymous. It's not shown visually. Some people may want to appear anonymous because if they appear public that they're supporting a certain channel, then it might make them look bad in the eyes of other people. They may get targeted. Witch hunt. Who knows? So I can kind of understand that, but you can leave your thoughts down below in the chat to like what you think about it. Do you think that viewers as well, people that just simply watch videos of certain channels, are they a target too? Have you been targeted yourself? Leave your thoughts down below. So there's been that going on and maybe Jim Terry or some people were associating it with pancakes in some way. That's what it was all caused by. But then pancakes is responding back saying, why are they calling me out or revealing certain stuff? A bit all over the place, right? Speaking of which, with Pancakes, let's just go over to his community post just to show you what he has had to say recently. Right, so here we go. This is from two days ago. Public community post, let's say, first of all. There is an address listed down below, but I'm not going to show that because, you know, it's not necessary and it does no good. It is all public information, technically speaking, as Pancakes provided it himself. But if this post was to be retracted, taken down, deleted, and some of the contents are up on other channels, then you could get done for that. And then it gives Pancakes possible ammunition to tell you off. OK, so that's why I'm not scrolling all the way down. Does that make sense? I'm not revealing the location because it's not necessary. But Pancakes did reveal it himself, of himself. But that's not my problem. But let's just read the bit above, at least. Pancakes says, Oh no, Ty Corbin, the meth drug dealer, promoting my address on Jim Terry's TV. That's what they do over there. Cyber bully. So scared my address is out there. It's probably because I have nothing to hide, like you guys. Okay, so some people are probably going to, maybe the rats will come out the cracks at this point, who knows. But let's continue. Um, here, let me help you. Here is my address. Please do something and fucking bored out here. If you would like to send me a card or a gift for Jaxi, whoever that is, maybe Oscar, whoever that is. My real address is below. If you want to stalk my house, please do. I'm always in need of original content. My cameras run 24-7. Okay, there you go. So what's this all got to do with Ty Corbin? Well, we saw earlier in this video where Ty Corbin left his comment. Ty Corbin talking about pancakes discrediting people if an individual person was to try and associate Brenner within the case. And Pancakes doesn't like that, supposedly. And then other people in the past saying that Pancakes is trolling people, etc. Okay. But now we've got Pancakes, his side of the story, his point of view, saying that the likes of Ty Corbin is uh, revealing Pancakes' address on Jim Terry's channel. I don't know if that's completely true, because I've not looked at that or the chat log of that. If any of you in the chat right now who have seen Jim Terry's videos has Ty Corbin revealed any addresses of people yes no just leave your thoughts down below i think there is a screenshot though of the chat so we'll just take a look at that provided it doesn't reveal too much okay so here's a screenshot from i guess the live chat replay of uh, jim terry's uh, video um you know above it it shows jim terry's face and stuff uh, top chat replay i think that's betty haywood Shout out to them. Sometimes she's appeared on a few of my live video premieres, which is good of them. So that's that's good. But yeah, the main focus there where it says Ty Corbin, Suz, 
Salty's address. What does suz mean? S-U-Z. Does that mean sorry? Does that mean suspicious? Like shortened? I'm not too sure. It doesn't actually reveal the address, but I guess maybe somewhere in the chat, maybe it's below or just above, it's shown, but not shown here. Does that make sense? This might have just been a quick snippet, screenshot, preview of what Ty Corbin was about to do or say, revealing Pancake's address. I mean, it's not on here, right? But it could be somewhere else in the chat. Does that make sense? But yeah, I mean, if it was the case, uh, in a in a general situation, I, I understand why Pancakes would be frustrated, but the way it's gone in this case, with it being so back and forth, and people doing it to one another, or it be this or something else, maybe it gets to that point where it becomes more laughable, or a joke to some, where it's like, God, got nothing left to lose now, might as well do this, might as well do that, I don't know. But, um, you can see how it gets messy. And I have noticed one other thing too, that whilst YouTube channels may not cover Dylan Round's case as much now, and that maybe in general, YouTube as a total platform doesn't seem to show much more because the case has gone quiet or it's more behind scenes now, what has followed is the resistance. So whether it be direct grudges or ones building, boiling up in the background, they have continued on, right? Ty Corbin versus Pancakes, Jim Terry versus Pancakes, Shaq Lady, previous cup in the middle of it all, etc. And then some other things going on. Um, what else is there? Maybe Cut and Shoot versus maybe Bella V. I don't know if that's true. I just saw another bit of drama elsewhere. But what I'm getting at is all these people were either all together or some were together, but all in the same space originally, covered the Dylan Rouse case talking about it. They've moved on since, doing their own things. Some work, some don't, whatever, but they're doing it, okay? But all that tension, frustration, people being exposed, people being called out, that has continued on. The case has been left behind in a way, but the drama hasn't, that's continued on. So they go off elsewhere doing other stuff, it still continues on back and forth, which is kind of interesting, right? When it came, from my experience at least, when it came to the Kenny Veach case, most of the cancer stayed within. You moved on. It didn't really follow. I mean, kind of makes sense. If you've got certain gatekeepers, people gatekeeping the case, they don't want you to pass through, but they are very welcoming that you walk on elsewhere and they won't follow. Makes sense. You're getting too close to the truth. People push you back. You you push away. You walk away. They're like, fine, fine. We're not going to come after you. But if it's not to do directly with that and it's just to do with, I got a personal issue with you, yeah. They're going to stick to you like glue until maybe it's resolved down the line. Until they finally get their own way. So, yeah. I want to just mention that to you, okay? So... I think with that all in mind now, we need to now finally move on to Warlike Ref being exposed. Kind of transitions on nicely. What does this mean? Was Pancakes, Salty Pancakes right all along? Well, regarding one thing, maybe Pancakes was right about something. But there could possibly be a misunderstanding as well. And that's where Weedleby comes in. And we get to that in a second. But speaking of secrets as well, there is one thing. Secrets going to be revealed shortly. As for one on the spot, if this was in the style of Jim Terry TV and I was directly asked, quick, you need to reveal your secrets right now. It's time. you got no choice. There is no escape. Okay, then I, Warlike Raph, have two stepmoms. One is Famous Up, the other one is Cleo the Playful Witch. How did that come about? Well, hmm. But Famous Up, because she's a soccer mom, she's teached me how to dribble balls. When it comes to Cleo the Playful Witch, she's teached me how to make objects disappear into things. The only bad thing is I was never taught how to make them reappear. 
rest in peace my rear. What a shame. Let's not forget that. Let's not just stop. We've got Indiana. <laughs> she says, oh, she's old. Oh, she's got no TV. Oh, she's got no toilet. She shits in the wood. Oh, no. You know, she's a wild individual. Oh, what about the age? Oh, no, too old. It's like, yeah, come on. The secret has been revealed, Indiana. You don't need to hide anymore. You know, secret Indiana, when Indiana says, oh, my voice is very nice and appealing. Yeah, yeah. It was slowly hinting, wasn't it? Revealing the truth that Indiana is now fucking 100 years old. She's probably like 20 or 30. Secretly a pole dancer instructor. You know that time when Indiana said, oh, I won 45 pounds on a scratch card. <laughs> yeah, right, man. Well, load of lies. You won 45 pounds by earning it, teaching a pole dancing class, and people were very good, but they gave you big tips. Tips, T-I-P-S, man. You can't hide it no more, Indy, okay? And then as for Ashley, oh, a gamer girl, like famous up. A digital creator, yeah, a digital creator for Warlight Raft's OnlyFans account in the background, of course. Yeah, aside from all those jokes, obviously they're not true. Well, unless Indiana is some kind of pole dancer instructor. Maybe you can give um, Joseph some lessons there. But yeah, though what we need to go on to now focus on is sorting out the conflict and the misunderstanding between Pancakes and me and how... I guess Weedleby may be caught up in between it. Weedleby recently, I guess, tried reaching out to Pancakes, explaining something. Pancakes wasn't hearing none of it, and I guess accused Weedleby of something in a negative way. And then, I guess, called out me that either me and Weedleby are working together, Weedleby is on my lap, lap dancer. No. Uh, puppet master. I can't remember which wording it was. But you get the idea, right? Maybe taking orders from someone, a parrot on the shoulder or something, and then anything negative directed aimed specifically at Salty. Well, tr to try and clear things up, reality is that isn't really the case, right? The only thing I'm trying to do is sound more like pancakes because, you know, at the end of the day, it takes some time to sound somewhat like someone, right? With like impressions of different people. You can't do it on the spot. You gotta keep repeating it and eventually you get that. As for issues, directly, I don't really have any issues with pancakes, right? I mean, there's been times where he said he's gonna uh, copyright or strike me and then he doesn't. So I guess that's a positive. Um, he hasn't directly caused me many issues. So I haven't got a problem with pancakes at the end of the day. On, to, like, on a serious note, I haven't got any issues, right? Um, and then like as for the drama events or the negative events which might impact him or where people are targeting him, all I simply do is just show his side, his point of view to balance it out with the other people's points of views, right? So it's not one-sided. Because it's one-sided, then it looks like you're taking a side. That's when the resistance does come in, and that's where it becomes a bit unfair, right? So that's where you've got to keep the balance there. If there was things going on behind the scenes with pancakes directed at me, then it is unfortunate and it is disappointing to her. But that aside, you know, it's okay. As for Weedleby, to try and clear her name so she doesn't get caught up in it, you know... I guess I can call Weedleby over right now to uh, sit on the lap. Weedleby, come on. Come on. Are you ready for the video? Come on, you have to be. Come on. Oh, for... It looks like someone's trying to call me. I guess that will have to wait, Weedleby. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know who it is, to be honest. Someone's calling me right now. You can't hear it because... Um... Well, why? Well, it's because I've got I've got it on uh, mute, the sound mute, but vibration is turned on, so it's vibrating in my hand right now. Jesus. So let me just open it up, turn it on. There we go. Upset. There we go. So, hello? Hello? When we try to sit there and look at ourselves and other people and say, you know, would I like this being done to me? No. Would I accept it? No. Um, okay, Shack Lady... I think you've got the wrong number. Yeah. 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 No, 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 don't worry, man. Don't worry, Shack Lady. 
It's fine, it's fine. Now you don't have to give me any more free turkeys. I'm already as stuffed as a pig. I'm fat already. I'm gonna burst any minute. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It'll be. It's okay. It, it was a mistake. I understand. Right. Okay. I'll see you. Goodbye. Have a good New Year's Eve. Yeah. Bye. 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 My God! How could I be interrupted trying to do a high level serious video, and I'm getting interrupted left, right, and center? Man, cannot believe it. Anyway. We just put that aside. Let's resume back to the pancakes, salty pancakes situation and Weedle Bee, just to cleanse and clear the air, okay? Because we don't want confusion. So Weedle Bee, come on. Come on, Weedle Bee. Bloody hell, you're heavy today. No, Weedle Bee, come on. Keep your head up. Keep it high. Don't look down. Be proud, okay? Oh, for fuck's sake, Weedle Bee. Sorry, looks like the phone's calling for me again. My god, who's it this time? Right, upset. Hello, who is this? So this guy right here, I think it's a raccoon. Um, Mr. Pancakes, are you okay? What the hell are you talking about? Huh? Yeah. Oh, a raccoon stuck on the fence. No dog's trying to bite at it. Yeah. I kind of have an issue like that, but it's with rats. Rats in the chat, coming and going, nibbling on the cheese, and sometimes taking the whole block away. Yeah, have you not had that issue? No, you're dealing with raccoons and coyotes. Well, I guess it's different, differs from country to country, right? Yeah? Okay, so uh, Pancakes, um, how are you doing? How are things going right now? It's just crazy. It's weird. I can't tell what's going on anymore. Well, yes, yes. I know my haircut has seen better days, but I can't do much about that at the moment, Pancakes. You gotta understand, right? I mean, maybe someday cut and shoot can give me a cut and blow dry. Hair. Huh? Yeah, yeah. But, Pancakes, can you please elaborate? Because your mood and tone seems a little flat. You gotta remember, I had it two stores, 10,000 square feet. I have found everything and everything, and so nothing really impressed me anymore. No, no pancakes, don't be like that. Sure, you might have covered a lot of distance, mileage, you've seen a lot, you've done a lot, you've covered a lot of distance, you've got a lot of square feet. But I'm sure nothing of that can compare to the square feet or amount of surface area as Weedleby herself, right? I mean, no, no, pancakes, it's okay, it's okay. Sure, there's a giant banana here, Gorilla Jack's got one himself, but yeah, it's, it's just not practical, is it? But what about Weedleby, right? Like, I, I can prove it to you, Pancakes, right now. Just give me a second. Let me just put you on hold, okay? Okay, just quickly. Right. Quickly type in Weedleby's number. Da -da 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 -da. 9999966666. There we go. Weedleby? Weedleby, are you there? Weedleby has a very big fat ass, but her ass is a fat but her belly is, and her tits hang down to the grass. Whoa, whoa, easy there, Weedleby. Great singing, and uh, yeah, thank you for confirming that you've got a fat ass. That's very helpful, that's very useful. Hopefully that will clear and dispel any confusion up with pancakes, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, but just one more thing, Weedleby, just a little bit of advice. I'd suggest you see to your chest and check that out because, you know, if things start dragging on the ground, you're going to get carpet burn and getting it there in the chest area is going to be very sensitive and sore on the nipples. You know, trust me, I've got extensive experience with sensitive nipples. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay, Weedle be. Yeah, okay. I'll see you soon. Yeah, right. Bye. 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 There we go. See, easily resolved and we can prove it in a second. But first, let me just reconfirm things with Pancakes because I've still got him on hold. Yeah, Pancakes, yeah, upset, there we go. So Pancakes, Mr. Pancakes, yeah. Okay, you heard that, right? You heard what Weedleby had to say. Sometimes when I would come across something so unique that was like, wow, it was a Willy Wonka golden ticket to me. Yeah, man, that's the right attitude to have, like a Willy Wonka ticket. But I think in Gorilla Jack's case, his Willy Wonka has gone a bit hard. I mean, I guess that's just a natural occurrence, you know. You, you can't help it, can you? 
But yeah, that's what I'm saying, pancakes. Keep up with that positive attitude and mentality. It will help in the long run. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? Let me just put you on like some kind of video call and prove it to you as, you know, regarding Weedleby. Let me just put you down for a second, okay? Yeah, yeah. There we go. Let me just set that up. Put on a little tripod. Just, just in front. Just in front, okay? Let me just press it on. Boop. There we go. Hi, pancakes. So, yes, Weedleby is here. Let me just call it Weedleby. I summon you. Get here now. Thank you. So Weedleby is here and obviously she's got a little bit of a Christmas attire. Okay, you know, as for proportion, it's probably a bit different compared to the video, but look, she's done her hair, very smooth, very nice. Look at that. Yeah, you see that? Pancakes? Yeah, smiling right at you. Mmm, yeah. And look at her face. Look at her hair. Wow. It's amazing. Very smooth. Where did you get that from? You know, who did that? You're not going to tell? No? Oh, that's a shame. But, you know, also glitter as well. Got some tinsel. Yeah, it shimmers and sparkles in the light and midnight sky. That's what you want. But obviously, the main attraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The main attraction. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. I'm not going there. Gorilla Jack only has access, I believe. But yes, we turn around. Oh, my God. Look at this. You see what I'm saying? Is that fat? It doesn't even fit the camera screen. It's like a fucking eclipse. You see this? This is what Weedleby is dealing with. Fat ass, man. Have you seen the size of it? God. It's bigger than a planet. My God. You could, bigger than a desert island, you could probably start some property development stuff on here, man. Yeah. I don't know how many people would go near it, but, you know, one of those things. So you see, you see what I mean, pancakes? You see the size of it? Out of this world, literally. So, apologies about that, Weedleby, for manhandling you. I know you only like it when Jack does, but there you go. So, yes, yes, yes. Let's just put the call back on. So, pancakes, do you see the proof now? Do you see the evidence? Anything that was something that nobody has ever seen or um, it's like a treasure to me going through all these storage units. Exactly, Pancakes. Keep on going. You're saying all the correct things. And as for the storage unit part, I think it's only really Gorilla Jack that owns Weedleby's storage unit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, once again, once again, it's just one of those things, right? So, you know, I think we've cleared most of the issues up pancakes right so you're dealing with raccoons on fences i'm dealing with rats um you despite not being impressed anymore by stuff weedle b you know has um you know explained herself clearly now and um you know when i when i when i try to do these accents you know just like you pancakes it's out of this world man. I, I just don't have a cold 24 7 like how you do I hope it goes someday because, man, it must be really rough keeping up with it. You know, there's been some people in my chat that have been really ill, and it's just, it's just difficult, difficult times. It's hard to breathe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So hopefully, um, it's starting to sound a little bit more realistic, right? Just in case you ever need a stunt double. If you're gonna have a stunt double, they need to sound like you as well. Yeah. Exactly. Problem is, though, this stunt double is a bit of a flat pancake, not as round. Kind of like a flat earth. Isn't that right, Gorilla Jack? Yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry, I was just talking to somebody else. What pancakes? Gorilla Jack. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, speaking of Gorilla Jack, wasn't that really the other issue? Yeah. Let, let me know your thoughts about Gorilla Jack. And I was thinking about this all night. I was like, what what was their relationship before this that would give him the balls to even talk like that? Hmm, yeah, Pancakes, that is a very good question. And I think I can answer it, okay? Pancakes, you listening? So, like with a fruit salad, you can't have juicy plums without a big banana, right? It's collective. It's all as one. They all work together to produce something, right? You know, like with this banana, I know you can't see it on screen, Pancakes, at the moment, but there is a pa there is a, a banana, and I think in Gorilla Jack's case, because he has the size, 
the power, the strength, the durability. That's what gives him confidence in how he can act and do things. Like, you know, Pancakes, the time when Gorilla Jack was nearly assassinated, you know, he didn't stand around, he didn't panic, he didn't freeze. He reacted quick. He used the fight or flight, you know, mentality. He got into the car for cover, something JFK couldn't do because he had no roof. But Gorilla Jack had a roof. He was able to get in the car and drive away to safety and he didn't cry one bit. So I think what Gorilla Jack has been through, what he has, what he hasn't got, it just makes him who he is and how Weedleby is. They're both good people. They don't mean any harm. Right, Pancakes? Yeah? Good. And then and then to completely switch up his uh, his character and give her the finger. Wait, what? That can't be true. You saying that Gorilla Jack fingered Weedleby? Wait, is that why Weedleby walks a little bit funny at times? What? Uh, that's giving me a bit of a, you know, a bit of a headache right now. You know, there's so many thoughts and ideas and theories that could, you know, come from that. I think we'll have to look at that another time, right? Anyway, I hope everything is sorted now. I hope you're doing okay and you have a good New Year's Eve and a new year. Okay? Take care, pancakes. I'll see you soon. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Bye. 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 There we go. You know, world peace has been established. Okay? Everybody hold your hands in the air and say, We the people have brought peace. Title fella, bring your blessings right now. And let it all flood in. Make me wet, please. There we go. It's that simple. Blessings are left, right and centre as we speak. Okay? All good. Now, speaking of Gorilla Jack, there's some unfinished business. Weedleby noticed it recently. Weedleby herself said that, and I might have mentioned it in a comment earlier on in this video, I believe, that due to taking stuff or being under some kind of um, new vitamins, that's what they were, vitamins, vitamins, also known in the UK, you know, dodgy American language, vitamins, Gorilla Jack has been taken, right? So we're going to reveal it, right? And we're going to briefly touch upon it right now. Due to taking them vitamins, it's altered how Gorilla Jack behaves, how he acts, what he does. That's why, partly, is why he's in South Africa, a part of the Gorilla High Council, okay? Went to Uganda to try and find his way, a meaning, a purpose in life. His banana went in a different direction, so he had to find a replacement. And as I said to Pancakes, if Gorilla Jack doesn't have a giant banana, his confidence goes. So by going to Uganda, getting his big banana back or a replacement, then he gone to South Africa, it all tied in as a story. There was a meaning behind it all. They were taking the vitamins at the time, as I guess in his way as a form of recovery, he's kind of gone a bit backwards, right? He's been altered with, and we need to get deeper into that, right? And it, that's where it applies to me, because people have noticed changes. Spot <clears throat> dots on the back. I started turning in to the map of Lucent. In the past, it was the M cave, right? The M cave. I am the key to the M cave. Maybe not anymore. Because my back has turned into the Lucent map. Okay? And how does that happen? Why did data and points, information, facts, and all these data points emerge? Where did they come from? They came from the vitamins, right? And yeah, as we said, Warlike like Wrath being exposed. There you go. The vitamins took over me. Uh huh. But to give a bit more context, we will be infiltrating the vitamin center next time, tomorrow, 
at 9.15 p.m. UK time, same time as this video, but tomorrow, okay? We're going to get down to the bottom. We're going to find the store, we're going to track it down, we're going to go inside, and we're going to review, we're going to analyse it and expose who the owner is and who caused my back to turn into a map, okay? It's all going to be revealed. Hands are on, literally, okay? So I hope you are ready. And also, there might be some other surprises too. So you better be there, okay? And we're not done yet. Do not go anywhere, Linda. You know, Linda always trots off first. Linda, sit down, okay? Christy, sit down. We're not done yet. No, no. You can giggle as much as you want. Fucking no, we're not done. I've got fucking hair in my mouth. Where did that come from? I don't know. Maybe I've been around too many gorillas to get a bit hairy, don't I? Ugh. But Weedle Bee, unfinished business, right? And if Pancakes is watching right now, then that's great. Ty Corbin as well. Whoever. Some rats, some uh, badgers, some bears, bring them all in. Bring in the camels, bring in all the humps and lumps, bumps, I don't care. So, as we're talking about, Weedlebee, okay? The fit, fucking hell, pull your head back. My God, what are you on? Have you been drinking all the Linda's alcohol or something? Right, the thing is, with Weedlebee, because she's confirmed, the chest has issues, in a way. Drag factor. And the big surface area on the bottom. And Pancakes was insinuating that Weedleby sits on my lap when I do videos, when I cover the case, if I'm talking about drama. Like, what? Am I, is she the parrot? Is she the worm? And I'm re receiving all the information and then passing it on and then twisting and turning it in a negative way. Like that concept? I can dispel the rumour right now. That is 100% not true. I repeat, 100% not true. Because as you remember, with Weedleby having such a massive bottom, how the hell do you think Weedleby can sit on my lap in the process of it all? Not possible. She, if she sat on my lap, the bed would break and then the bread, the bed would fall into, uh, you know, the lower ground floor. Literally. There is not enough space. It's just not practical. I can even demonstrate it right now. See, we'll be, yeah. I'm going to sit on me. Sit on my lap. You see? Pancakes. You have to admit. Pancakes. You have to admit. If Weedle B was sat on my lap during my videos and covering the drama, if that really was the case, then how could you see me? Because if, if she was here, Weedle B then basically the whole camera screen would be covered with her backside, literally, like that. And that's obviously not the case, but just to prove it further, okay, pancakes, Weedleby, hmm? Weedleby, you're fired, yeah! I'm gonna suplex you. Oh my God, what's happened to your hair? Weedleby, was that another lie? Are you, are you trying to pull a Kurt Wadsworth, huh? Oh, I don't know. We'll be, I'm going to suplex you back to uh, whichever city you're from. Suplex city, bitch. Whoa. It's that simple. Okay. So hopefully that clears up any issues. Now, if anyone else has additional issues, grievances, complaints, feel free to list it down below. If you have any additional thoughts, opinions, or whatever, Make sure to list it down below. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video, but also found it helpful at the start regarding the Dylan Brown's case. Shout out to the people in the chat right now and throughout. And also, if there's anyone towards the end or midway through that got dissatisfied, just remember a portion or a fair portion of this video was focused and locked in to the Dylan Brown's case, current drama, questions, clearing up confusion, the uh, bail money on Brenner, the lot, okay? Rewind it back if you want to look into that specifically at the start, okay? And that should clear everything up. So, as said, make sure you're around tomorrow for part two of Raf's exposure, okay? We're going in deep, okay? And yeah, that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Good night and goodbye.